All right, all right. <clears throat> we're going no intro today. We're just gonna jump right in it, man. Welcome to the Testing Fan Battle Podcast. I'm your host for today, Crenshaw. And we got three of the four here today. We got Mr. Kenneth, the messenger, talk to him. What's good, everybody? What's up, Testing fans? Hope everybody had a great day. Victory Wednesday. We here. We here. We here. We got Mr. Bo Diggity713. Hey, hey, what's happening, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? One and oh. One and oh. And we got Mr. Ruben. Talk to him. What's going on, everyone? Victory Wednesday. Like you said, I see Jesus. Saludo. A saludo. A saludo a todo mi gente ahí, man. We're feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. One and oh, baby. We one and oh, man. We're feeling real good today, man. So, you know, we had a we had a recap on Sunday, talked about the game and everything, you know, what we what we did and what we didn't like. And Bo, you wasn't here. So can you give us an insight of the game that maybe you seen? After the game or during the game that you need to talk about on Sunday? Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure y'all covered everything, but the one thing I saw was uh the DBs gotta do gotta be a little bit better discipline. Um I don't think Richardson should have had those plays. I don't think we should have allowed those plays, but I think it was a combination of hey, don't let Taylor um run all over us. We're gonna keep the box, make sure he stays contained. And if Anthony Richards beat it with his arm, he beat it with his arm. So I think they gave, they they didn't mind giving up plays like that. But other than that, I think the run game, I think they found their they found their run game. They found it. I think they finally found it. Um, Nico amazing. Stefan Diggs, I'm happy he got two touchdowns. What a what a come out game for Stefan. Uh, Joe Mixon, player of the week. Just just what we needed, but what we've been missing is a bell cow back that can make plays and and make cuts and find the schemes and the gaps to get the yards that we need to ice games or win games. So, yeah, that's what I saw this past Sunday. Okay, so basically you say we got the bell cow, we got the run game, and this is for Ruben. And, Ruben, I'm pretty mm. sure you heard Mr. Clint Sterner's <clears throat> comment uh, this past Monday about he think Joe Mitten, I don't know if he said is better or mm. more skilled than Aaron Foster. They say he's the best running back you see in this uniform. How did you feel about what he said, man? Well, you know, all due respect to Joe Mixon and what he did on Sunday. 159 yards of career, high for him. You know, what we said about Joe Mixon was he's the most talented running back we've had since. Keyword, since. Arian Foster. And with what Clint Cerner said, it just goes to, you know, to show he has not been watching the Houston Texans for a very long time. You would not expect him to either. He was a former uh former Dallas Cowboy, uh, former, you know, Razorback. So Houston, Texas are kind of not in his wheelhouse. So, you know, you kind of have to chalk that up to not knowing the history of the Houston Texans. But once again, when you're on the flagship station, when you're on 610 Sports Radio, you're supposed to know who arguably one of the greatest running backs in franchise history is. And with Arian Foster, he was untouchable. I mean, we called him the touchdown king. This was a guy who could legit win the whole game by himself. I mean, what was it? The uh, Buccaneers game, he had 100 yards on the ground. He had another 80 yards through the air. Just Arian Foster was different. And like I said, shout out to Joe Mixon. He had a fantastic game. But Arian to 99% of the Houston Texans fan base is the best running back to everywhere, the red, white, and blue. Yeah, I really think he was saying that just to get some clout because he knew he was going to get some pushback behind Maybe that. Maybe he didn't know. I mean, it's, it's no Maybe way he, he didn't know. know who Aaron Foster it's, it's is. no way. It, it, I mean, after one game, I see if Joe played years here. The man played one game. One game. So, come on now, Clint. Um, yeah, Kenneth, I, what, what, I, is, what I, did I you think? think okay, so. Bo, go ahead. What you think about it, Bo? Yeah, I, I think Clint was more so saying, like, okay, we know Aaron Foster was an undrafted running back. Mm -hmm. I think he meant more so of like his resume coming from Oklahoma, being you know drafted and and uh, all those things and and I think that's what he meant when he said probably the best running back in the Texans uniform. But Aaron Foster was no joke. He he was undrafted and came got out the mud and got a starting position and he had that on lock for a good amount of years. So yeah, I think that's probably probably just meant like as far as like stature and name wise, you know, coming to Houston. Maybe he could have used Lamar Miller or something. He had to say Aaron <laughs> Foster, man. You know, it's other running backs he could have used Steve Slayton or something. 
Um, Kenny, what you think about it, bro? Man, I think he's telling the truth, right? I mean, he said in these uniforms, right? These are new uniforms. So, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. so maybe he talked about these uniforms, but I don't know, man. I mean, of course, he's not better than Aaron Foster for the Texans. You know what I'm saying? Aaron Foster is the best running back that ever played in the Houston Texans organization. That's that's for sure. Joe, um, he's definitely the second best. I mean, especially if he keep this up, he's the second best running back that playing the um, Texas uniform. But, hey, I mean, he might have an argument if he get a Super Bowl with us. Who knows? But um, at the end of the day, no, nah, man, Aaron Foster, the best running back ever played in the Houston Texans organization. All right. I, I like that. All right. So on Sunday, um, down in Miami, I don't know if these cops have parlays or something, but um, the cops pulled over Tyreek Hill. I'm pretty sure you guys seen the video, dissect the video, but let me get your thoughts on it. I'm going to start with you, Ruben. What did you think about that, man? You think Tyreek was wrong, the cops was wrong, or was it equally wrong? Man, it's wrong all around, you know, on both parts. And uh, crazy situation. I'm glad that he was able to get through it. I'm glad that his uh, teammates came in his defense also. And what started off as a rough morning ended up being a fantastic day for Miami as they come back and beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. And one of the main reasons why was Tyreek Hill. A crazy situation to start week one for Miami. But at the end of the day, man, like they say, winning cures all. Uh, tough situation, but I'm glad it ended up with him being able to walk away from the situation and go play some football. All right. Um, Kenneth, um, tell us the truth. Did you have Tyreek in your fantasy? Honestly, I'm not playing fantasy football this year. So, oh, okay. So, nah, man. I didn't. So what do you I think didn't. about the situation, bro? Like, be man, honest. So, so I'm going to be honest. Um, this this is coming from a person that experienced this at the age of 19. And, of course, it didn't get to how we did with Tyreek. Um, but it was – and I was with a group of um, young black men, of course, and we coming from the gym, hooping, and we ended up at Kroger's getting some power rate. I'm going to make this story short. Anyways, um, it got to a point where somebody called the police on us saying that we doing this, calling names to women or whatever the case may be. So police pull up and one of the young guys got jacked up, whatever, handcuffs on the car. And he talking, you know what I'm saying? Talking, um, I'm not going to say reckless, but disrespectful in a way. He's not being respectful, whatever the case may be. Long story short, I came into the play um, and I was being respectful. The cop was trying to get me to turn up, but I was being, you know, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? He's antagonizing me, still trying to get me to turn up, but I still stay respectful and I brought him down to my level. So in the situation with Tyreek, I'm not saying he was in the wrong, but sometimes you just can't do a little things just to make them try to get you to, you know what I'm saying, go even more. Even though Tyreek didn't, he didn't talk disrespectful. He was just like, man, I'm, you know what I'm saying, roll this window up and roll it back down. He's like, hey, man, like stop tapping on my window. Stuff like that. You can't really talk to the cops like that. You know what I'm saying? When you did skin color, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to just be straight, straightforward. When you did skin color, you can't say certain stuff to cops. You can't, you know what I'm saying? You just got to keep it respectful. You ain't even got to say, sir. You no, know? you know what I'm saying? Keep it cool, calm, collective, and just stay down. Even though they up, bring them down to your level. So I experienced that. And like I said, I brought them down to my level. And every, after that, everything was cool. But I hate Tyreek had to deal with that. Um, it's unfortunate. And, of course, there's been a lot of different situations. we seen on camera go worse than that. So just thank God he didn't have to go through nothing worse than that, and he's still here today. Yes, sir. Thank God for that. Um, And quickly, um, Bo, um, you know, you did a skit on it. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> give us your thoughts on it because you did that skit pretty quick, bro. You must have, you must know what was coming or something, man. No, I, I saw the news break and I said, hey, let me, let me see what happens with this one. So, yeah, uh, it definitely did not go as, the, as as my skit went. It was nowhere near that as the skit went. But, yeah, like Kenny said, you know, like Ruben said, like you said, it's just unfortunate. At the end of the day, you know, cops in, in that situation have their power in, the power and the authority at that moment. And to hate to say it, but you're at the cops' mercy. And it's, it is what it is. We have rights. Sometimes rights are taken away from us here and there. But like Ken said, your the best bet for anybody out there, Try to make sure the situation doesn't get to that point. Just do what you can. Take the ticket. Go about your business. Because nobody wants to lose their life in situations like that. That's true. That's true. So on to one more NFL news. The booty hole bandit strikes again. Um, 
Ruben, what's your thoughts when you saw the notification go across? I don't know if you have an iPhone, Android. I don't care about that guy. I really don't. And I Good. don't feel like this is a situation that we should definitely be talking about. Because once go. again, uh, you know, we are talking about just a horrible situation. So I'm not even going to waste my energy on this. He's not here no more. He's ruining another franchise. So let's move, that's let's all I have on. to say on it. Test is new. Let's move on. So that's McKean. He signed. He did not sign, and all of a sudden today he signed. He on the practice squad. So, um, Kenna, give me your thoughts on Des McKean, man. Um, you think? Um, I mean, of course he's a big addition. I don't know why he was cut in the first place, but give me your thoughts on Des McKean. First, why did he put that tweet out? And who do you think made the phone call to say, "Hey, take that shit down, bro"? Um, maybe <laughs> his his uh, his um uh, agent told him, "Hey, take that down." Um, but at the end of the day, like from the jump, y'all know this. I did not want this McKean gone. I didn't understand that. I felt like, hey, we got Petrie playing this position for the first year, and it's like we don't know how this is going to turn out. I mean, yes, he's been looking good in preseason. He's been looking good in training camp a little bit, but we still see him getting toasted in one-on-ones, which is going to happen because, you know what I'm saying, it's not easy to guard receivers one-on-ones. But um, at the end of the day, I was just kind of like questioning, why did we cut him and why did we keep Miles – Brian, I mean, I know people say Miles Bryan is a special team guy, but Desmond King is a special team guy too. So I didn't really understand why we cut Desmond King, but I'm glad he's back and hopefully he's be active on the roster sometime soon. May not need him this week, but I feel like we're going to need him in the future just in case things don't go well with Petrie at the slot position. All right, um, Ruben, um, I don't know if you if you have an old lady of anything, but you know, don't he feel like one of those girls that you can't, you know, let go? You always keep going back to her, make sure you have some good pussy or some, or by no child, whatever you want to call it. Um, what's up with this game, bro? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, this is just us. Uh, it's a situation where he didn't make the fifty-three man last year. He got cut. You signed him back towards the end of the season. He played well for you. Um, I initially did not think he was going to make the fifty-three man this year with Jalen Petrie playing in that nickel role in that star role. Um, this is a veteran who is familiar. I definitely don't think he's a practice squad player. You know, we're talking about a former all pro here, but it just goes to show that the NFL is a, is a year to year league and players digress, players digressed. Um, he definitely still thinks of himself as, you know, one of the top guys in the NFL excited to see what he does here. Am I expecting a big impact from Desmond King? Absolutely not. Um, but he's been here for what now, what, two, three, four years. So mm-hmm. Welcome back, Desmond King, <laughs> for like the eighth time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the eighth time. All right, Bo, um, give me your thoughts. I know we kind of talked about him at the beginning of the show, but just give me your thoughts on – matter of fact, was Joe Mixon on your bingo card of winning the offensive player of the week? Was that on your bingo card? Be honest with you. No, not really. But like I said last week, I said he will probably get maybe 15% of the offense. I was wrong. That man was like 75 80% of the offense this past Sunday. So I did not see that coming. I thought we would abuse the Colts' DBs a little bit more than what we did. And we really didn't attack that way. I guess they felt good about the run game and said, let's just keep leaning on the run game. Let's, 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 uh, you know, work this clock, get out of here. So I think that's why they said, hey, it's working. Let's, let's make sure you keep working. But I did not see that coming. I did not see 159 yards. What was it, 178 all purpose, something like that? Yeah. I did not see that coming. I did not. Okay, well, I'm going to ask Kenan, and I know he's going to say he saw it coming, but I'm going to ask you anyway, Kenan, did you see it coming? Nah, man, I did not see that coming. And, look, I love Joe Mixon. I know the type of back he is. When we when we traded for him, man, I was super excited because I felt like we had that guy, you know what I'm saying, closest to Aaron Fossil, you know what I'm saying, in the system. Um, But, man, I did not see that 159 coming at all, like, like Bo said, I thought we was going to try to abuse them DBs. You know what I'm saying? They got a lot of young guys back there. They they not really that – I'm not going to say they're not that good. They straight, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I know they're not yeah. good enough to stop our receivers. So, um, at the end of the day, I thought we was going to abuse the pass. But I understood why we did that with the run game. When it's working, hey, keep feeding it. You know what I'm saying? Don't stop because we're going to need this one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying we needed it versus the coast, but at the end of the day, Hey, let's get Joe Mitchell in the groove. You know what I'm saying? Get him mm-hmm. feeling good. So I, I like what happened. Okay. Um, Ruben, now this now this one here is kind of fucking with my head, bro. And maybe you can enlighten mm-hmm. enlighten us on this. When did Jeff Okuda get hurt? 
I, I, I really don't know. Um, it's, you know, an unfortunate situation because you haven't seen him. You haven't seen CG Henderson and both of those guys you were relying on to be, you know, hopefully one of your number two cornerbacks or depth. And now, you know, both of those guys are not here no more. Right. And we'll force you. Jeff could, will be back when he's healthy, but for the foreseeable future is not here. Um, it must've happened at practice or, um, maybe when he got off the plane, I really don't know when, you know, when Jeff Okuda got hurt, but sucks. And, uh, you know, he was trying to figure it out. And, um, you know, I said, when we sign him, if it doesn't work out here, I don't see it working out anywhere else. That's true. I think you're right. I think when he got off the plane, that's when he got hurt, but, um, they didn't say nothing about it, man. I digress. So, all right. So one more thing on the coast game, bro, you know, like I say, Col um, Texas win 29, 27, you know, what did you guys think about, the defensive line stunts they was doing on us, man, because it seemed like it was confusing the offensive line. We had guys blocking two guys, guys wide open. So what do you guys think about that? Because, you know, the Bears watching the same tape that we watch, and they're going to, you know, it's a copycat lead. They're going to copycat the same thing. So what did you guys think we can do better going into this week against the Bears that we didn't do right against the Colts? I'm going to start off with you, Kenneth. Me, I'm sorry. I mean myself. But anyways, first off, communication. Like, I don't like seeing one of the older, probably the, I think he's the oldest on the old line on Mason. He literally didn't see Buckner coming on the other side. And it's like, yo, you don't, when you in pass block, you don't just keep your eyes on one person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see both two people on one guy. Somebody might be open. So I think you're supposed to have your eyes. Not, not think I know. You're supposed to have your eyes wide open. You know, you help, but you still keep your eyes open. And that stuff just came straight through. We don't need to see that. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I'm glad it happened week one. They can learn from it. And hopefully this doesn't happen against the Bears. Because mm. I think we need to set a set a um a statement with the Bears and whoop the crap out of them. Have our way with it. That's what I think we need to do this Sunday night. Yes, we do. Um, Bo, uh, uh, unless my unless my eyes were tripping though, but did you see um Mitchell, the rookie, wide open a lot for a couple of touchdowns, but um Anthony Richardson just overthrew him? Yeah, yeah, you know, um and, and that's the thing, you know, accuracy not being on Anthony Richardson, he can throw the ball as far as he can, as far as you want him to throw the ball, but he's gonna learn, I guess, as the years go on to be more accurate. But yeah, some passes he missed, and I'm glad he missed it. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad he missed him too. I mean, okay, so like I say, so let's let's dive into the Bears game. Um, Ruben, give us mm. the key to victory for this Sunday night. And I'm glad we finally on prime time, prime time. Well, you know, the first thing you bring up is prime time, man. And I think it's the first time we've had a Sunday night football since 2019. And the crowd's going to be rocking. We're going to be there. Well, not at the game, right, because we're broke. But we'll be at the tailgate having a great <laughs> time. Um, we'll be in the blue and orange lot. So if you are going, hit me up. I am so excited. You know, so excited to be with the crowd, man. I was there the previous couple of years when it wasn't good. And now with Super Bowl expectations, I'm expecting a Super Bowl tailgate environment. But with the Bears, you look back at their game against the Tennessee Titans and they did not score an offensive touchdown. How they won that game was two defensive touchdowns, a block punt for a touchdown, and a kick return touchdown. It went south for the Tennessee Titans in the second half, and they gave that game away. You heard their coach said, you know, Coach Callahan say, if we would have punted on first and 10 every single time, we would have won the game. And I think the Houston Texans are going to dominate this. I mean, really, if they keep CJ shot upright, as you guys brought it up, you know, the offensive line was spotted with the protection. You know, in the first half they were, they gave up three sacks. He only gave up one in the second. And that one in the second was around three uh, with the, in the third quarter was seven minutes left. So for the last 20 minutes of football on offense, C.J. Shard wasn't touched, right? You heard Stephon Diggs say when the O-line needed to drop their nuts, they did. But let's keep it on with the running game. Let's see Joe Mixon, offensive player of the week, 159 yards on the ground. Let's see a more balanced passing attack, man. Um, when you look at the Bears, they they should not compete with this Houston Texans team. And, you know, if it does go south, man, we are going to sit here saying what went wrong. But you have to keep CJ upright, keep running the ball. And on the defense, man, just keep him contained. We know Caleb Williams can extend the pocket. Well, he tried last week, right? Found out it's much different than college, you know, than the NFL. 
Um, keep them in the pocket, run the ball good, and let's see some, you know, some other wide receiver go off for 100 yards. Okay, speaking of the other wide receiver go off 100 yards, Kenneth, which wide receiver you think that's going to be? For our team or the Bears? Our team, yes, sir, our team. Tank. Tank Dell. Tank Dell. I'm feeling that too. Um, Johnson is going to be on Nico. I'm not saying going to lock Nico down at all, so nobody's going to take that. It's me saying that. I'm not saying that at all. But I think Tank is going to be the guy to get the over 100 yards receiving. I mean, if you lock him down, it's okay. We got two other guys, three yeah. other guys, four other yeah. guys. Yeah, so it's okay. Yeah. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I mean, it, it know, might be tough for him, but I don't think lockdown, but it's definitely going to be a tough for Nico. Yeah, he's going to make him work. So so you said Tank Dell, right? Yeah. Okay, Bo, who do you think? I say Tank, too. You know, first game in the stadium. Um, something about Tank and NRG. He, gets, he he just goes off. He he does his big one in NRG, man. So Sunday night game, the lights, everything. I'm telling you, he's going to come out. He's going to show out. Okay, so basically, I should start tank this Sunday. Okay, I'm, I'm start tank down. Right you got tank down your fantasy. You know, start, start tank down and deal. you know put some money on him for scoring a touchdown because I think he's going to see touchdown. the end zone on Sunday. You know, he said he's built for the lights, so I, I I cannot wait for tank down, man. Okay, all right. So, Bo, I'm a, I'm gonna reverse it back to you, like we used to play Uno back in the day. <laughs> Give me your predictions of the game. Give me the score predictions. Okay, let's go. Okay, I need this to be a statement game for the Texans. I need this to be a all eyes on Houston. Everyone's going to be watching. Put everyone on notice that last year wasn't a fluke. We're going against a rookie quarterback. Granted, CJ didn't have a good rookie start last year for the first two games, so hopefully Caleb won't have a bad start for the first two games as well. Make a statement. I need them to blow him out. I want it to be at least, what did I say? Texans 31, Bears 14. Mm. That's what I want it to be. Okay, 31-14. Okay, Kenneth, give me your score predictions. So um, it's crazy because I was just chopping up with one of my homies. And um, my score prediction was 34, between 34 and 38 to Bears 20. A 40 piece? Hey, possibly. But here's the thing. that That's that's what I want. But look, y'all, if we going to keep it a bug, we're going to keep it a bean on this show. And don't get me wrong, D'Amico has changed a lot of things when he came here. You know what I'm saying? Normally, this doesn't happen. But last year, if we keep it a bean, last year, Bryce Young, Mr. Bryce Young had a little fun with us a little bit and, you know, won the game. Um, what's his name? Desmond Ritter had yeah, some fun Ritter, yeah. with us last year, and they beat us. So it's like I'm hoping that that doesn't happen this Sunday night. Don't let that happen, defense. Like for real, there's no won, reason bro. that Caleb Williams to have his way with us at all. We do not need that to happen. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. As long as that doesn't happen, we're gonna blow the we're gonna blow them out the waters for sure. Especially when you know that Romo Dunze did not practice today. Keenan Allen did not practice today. I doubt those two are gonna play on Sunday. I would not risk it if I was a Chicago Bears. You know, I know. You know, this season my goals are well. You know, it's. It's weird with the Bears because a lot of people expected their season to go hard, how ours did last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Bo said, make a statement, kill the hype of another young quarterback like you did last week with Anthony Richardson. And as I mentioned before, they did not have a single offensive touchdown. Their offense was not good whatsoever. And this Houston Texans defense, I think it's a hell of a lot better than the Tennessee Titans. I think our offense is a hell of a lot better than the Chicago Bears defense. So I think it's going to be a matchup where the Houston Texans put up 30 and the Bears, I'll say they'll be lucky to put up 10. I, I do think Caleb gets his first touchdown, but that's going to come like second half, fourth quarter. Yeah. Garbage time, touchdown. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because because I, I want to ask y'all. I want to ask y'all first. What's up? Because they didn't score on the Titans, will you look at this Texans defense differently if they put two touchdowns no. up on us? No, okay. no, because nah. this is on the road. They got them any given Sunday. Okay. Okay. All right. So what Ruben said, so they supposed to be exactly how we was last year. So, I mean, they're going to start off 0-2. So that's a guaranteed <laughs> victory. Guaranteed <laughs> victory. I, I like that, it. Ruben. I like I love it. it. All right. Well, I got the score of 30-13 Texans. Um, like I say, we should make – we should, like, fuck him up. I mean, it's – like, it's, he shouldn't do shit on us, but – he see the lights on him. He gonna have his nails painted, so he gonna show out, you know. <laughs> so 
we got to keep it gangster. But on that note, fellas, unless y'all have any else, any other thing to talk about before we jump off? Yeah, Houston, I, I need to- you there on oh, Sunday. Oh, I yeah. need you there loud. Like, they've asked for fans to go dressed in all white because that was the first time we were going to see the new white jerseys on the field. So I think they're going to have some type of special event. Really like white. I've been saying all off season, this is the season that I've been waiting all my life for. And I am putting some expectations on that crowd on Sunday. You need to make that camera shake. Make it hard for young Caleb Williams to understand and to know what the hell is going on. And I think this crowd is going to live up to the hype. Um, I've had the privilege of seeing some of their pregame show of, uh, you know, shout out to the Discord. If you're in the Discord, you saw what I saw. It looks insane. Absolutely insane. Um, Just the excitement just blew up more. But. This crowd needs to be hostile on Sunday. It needs to be hostile the entire year. Man, All right. I, I, on tickets. Well, I, I like I like I like what you said, Ruben. I will be at the game. I will be inside. Ooh. So I'm gonna make sure my section is loud. We tailgating. I will, come, I will come to the blue light and orange light. I'm okay. coming to holler at you. Um you know, I'll be getting that kind of late, but I'm gonna be there though, even though it's a night game. I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna be there on time though. I'm gonna be there on time. I, I would hope so. Don't but I'm always in my seat. I'm always in my late, seat bro. on time though. I'm always in my seat on okay, time. Okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, uh, hey, if I can ask yeah, for yeah. yeah, I was in my seat on time because they said get there early because they're gonna give us some lights on our wrist, you know, like how they have oh they're the doing that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. So they said get there oh, early right. for lights. Yeah, on the wrist. Okay. So, if you have gone to like a uh um a Coldplay concert, a Lincoln, no, not Lincoln Park, but like a Coldplay concert and things like uh, a Pink concert or a Taylor Swift concert. They give you those type of bands um, yeah. that they synchronize with the mm-hmm. sound of the stadium. Mm-hmm. So what, whatever they're going to have bumping, dude, can you imagine if they have it on third down, raise your hands in the air with the That'd swarm and you're, ooh, I'm Dude, <laughs> I'm ready for war. I'm ready for murder. Like, I'm ready to just s- slice down every single opponent in front of me. I'm looking forward to that 10-day stretch of the Miami Dolphins, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Baltimore Ravens, man. I I want it, man. This Houston Texans, this season's great. So far, right? So far, Oops. knock on wood. Yeah, so so far, so far. Okay, so we want to know, and every week we're trying to go want to know. So that's the slogan for this week, want to know. Ruben, tell everybody where they can find you at. Hey man, 713 Houston Sportcast is where you can find me. At 9 o'clock, I will be on the AFC South Roundtable with my brothers, Houston Stressions, Harley from the lead, and my boy AD. We're going to talk some trash to the Colts fans in there, uh, kind of break down week one, give a little sh- uh, preview to week two. But guys, this is what we've been waiting for. Like Jake, yes, uh, like Jake just said, we're 2 and 0, baby. Let's get to that. Let's get there. Let's get there. Kenny, talk to me. Y'all can follow me on Twitter at Messenger underscore Kenno. Um, YouTube and Instagram, Kenneth the Messenger. And like I said last week, man, working on some, some big a track, um, a song, music video. I'm going to keep everything else on the low. But, yeah, this is something coming and some heat for sure. He got, he got some heat like the Houston summer. Bo, talk to me. Y'all know the vibes. Follow me on all socials at Bo Diggity713. We going up. We going, we going up on a Wednesday, not a Tuesday, fellas. On a Wednesday. Mm. All right, y'all can find me at Fifth World Crenshaw everywhere, man. Y'all can follow Matt at A1 Day One, Chef Briggs. Y'all follow the pod, podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thanks for the comments, like, subscribe, and we out. Go get some food in your bellies. <laughs>